thank you, uh, thank you, NASCOM, for inviting me. You know, uh, mythology seems so ancient, right? You have these people wearing strange costumes, uh, especially on television, and then you're talking about something like digital, and you're talking about chat GPT and all these exciting things, and you keep wondering, how do you marry the two things? And you know, I always remember when I go out to restaurants nowadays, we go to eat food. In the old days, people would start praying, you know, food has come, Anna Brahma has come. But nowadays, of course, we take the phone out and that's the prayer that we take and we want to click the photograph. Otherwise, food will not taste anymore. Or you go to see a beautiful sunrise and a sunset and you could start doing, you know, um, you want to give some water and you want to pray to the rising sun and Aditya Varanam and all that. Now you remove your phone and quickly take a photograph, put it on Instagram live and say, what a beautiful shot. Because you are only alive when you have photographed the moment. You are only alive when it is on Instagram. And you feel that you exist when you get the likes. That's what matters, right? The whole purpose of existence is about working for Facebook and ensuring you get likes. We are all employees of Instagram. We are all employees of Facebook. We are all employees of Apple, of the FANG mafia. We work for them. We give them data so that they can control our lives more and more and more and more and more in the name of freedom. But that's what has happened in the last 20, 30 years. Many of us in this room actually be began our lives in a world where telephones had wires. And I love the videos where the next generation is shown a telephone with wire and a dial and said, please make a call. And they keep wondering what that is. And nowadays nobody uses the doorbell anymore, right? We call. And from the next room, we don't use bells anymore. It's all about the phone. The world is changing. But the Buddha said, nothing lasts forever, everything changes. He said this two and a half thousand years ago. So there's nothing new, it's just the technology is changing. People are not changing. Technology doesn't make you a nice person. Technology doesn't make you a decent human being. Technology is technology. You can have a iPhone 12, 13, 14, 15, 10,000, it doesn't matter. It won't make you a nice person. It will just give you a better technology. Mythology is about people. Mythology is the map of the human mind. When you read Western mythology, you understand the Western mind. When you read Chinese mythology, you understand the Chinese mind. When you read Indian mythology, you understand the Indian mind. So mythology for me is about understanding people and what technology does to us. I observe the billionaires of the world desperately wanting to be on social media. I was told that, you know, as a young man, when you have nothing, you work hard and you make money because you want to live a happy life. But what about those who have more than everyone? More than anyone? What about that 1% which controls 90% of the world? Shouldn't they be the most content people on earth? I have met them. And they are very scary people. Because they want to constantly remind you they are part of the 1%. They also want the Instagram likes. They also want the Facebook likes. No different from your child. No different from your maidservant. No different from your cook or your chef. Or the young college student who is just starting his career. Who wants to be seen by the world. You suddenly see a billionaire woman wanting to be seen by the world. A billionaire man getting angry when the likes go down. And hiring a PR agency to ensure that he's on top of the charts. And that is democratization of digital technology. You realize that all the money in the world has not made them content. They still seek attention and validation. 
because as human beings we are not sure if we are alive until people look at us we want to be seen the sanskrit word for this is darshan am i seen do i see you do you see me when we go to temples we are told darshan karo you go and see a deity with big large unblinking eyes and you hope you are seen today that's what we do right imagine you put a post on the internet on linkedin and you don't get a like how will you feel invalidated that you don't exist that you have not been acknowledged are you alive then and it's not just you you can go anywhere in this world that chinese boy that israeli girl the australian child everyone looking for the like likes likes am i trending do i have enough views am i being seen am i alive you're a superstar on youtube and then you enter the airport expecting everyone to recognize you and the security guard has never heard of you he just says raise your hand <laughs> and you feel so humiliated janta ho main kaun hu 1.2 million views on youtube doesn't matter you don't exist we want to be seen we want to be seen we are hungry for attention look at me look at me it's an addiction i want more of it i want to be seen and that is important in the old days when the king would enter the city there would be drummers saying the king has arrived the herald would say the king has arrived there would be singers and dancers saying the king has arrived today you and i know we are alive because there's a notification you are mat you matter you matter you are being seen people are responding there are comments there are likes dislikes trp rating is going up you matter you will be rewarded by the market what has not changed it is the human animal has not changed so let us look at mythology and try to understand what is this human animal technology will keep coming better technology better technology better technology you know it reminds me of the time when duryodhan went to indraprastha he went to his cousin's palace and he saw that the cousin's palace was fabulous it was the most beautiful palace in the world it was so beautiful that he was filled with envy and that is what led to the war at kurukshetra we are all envious that other people have better technology than us other people he has chat gpt i should also have chat gpt he has that phone i should also have that phone we are still duryodhans and you know what is interesting about duryodhan duryodhan's father was blind and his mother was blindfolded his father could never see him his mother refused to see him he lived a life of deprivation sensory deprivation he wanted to be seen he just wanted someone to see him it's like going to tinder and realizing nobody is swiping left or right you don't matter you don't exist your cellophane people see through you it's the worst feeling in this world imagine going to a wedding and nobody recognizing you that's what duryodhan felt he wanted to be seen and then he sees his talented cousins everybody is admiring them oh look he has built a company million dollar company billion dollar company he has sold his company for 5 zillion dollars he was your friend and look he has arrived and you suddenly feel so small and so miserable and you keep saying am i alive am i alive this has not changed this doesn't change with time it is true for your boss it is true for your child for your husband 
you suddenly see people in a lift and you're sitting all alone what do you do you look out for your best friend who always responds to you the phone you know how the phone was invented the smartphone this is a urban legend little babies when they are born they need food right but then people realize that anybody who has a baby knows right when a baby cries you give it food but that's not what the baby wants all the time it needs to be caressed touched because when the child is caressed and touched the child gets the signal it is wanted the world wants it they know that orphan children in many orphanages the nurse would give them food but if they don't caress the child the child will shrivel and die the baby will die because it feels the world doesn't want me so touch is something that we need we yearn for it we want to feel we matter but now we live in a world of good touch and bad touch there is one touch which is always safe it is the touch of this lovely smartphone so whenever we are lonely we just touch it and we feel so nice so what if my wife doesn't talk to me my phone talks to me so what if my son doesn't hug me my phone talks to me so what if the world has rejected me my phone talks to me it knows all my likes and dislikes it knows all what i need to do it tells me when to sleep when to eat it tracks every activity isse behtar aur kya hai it's the best operating system in the world it operates me it controls me once upon a time there was a rakshasa in order to kill it you have to find the parrot in which its life was located today we all have parrots some have two parrots and so easy to control them you want to traumatize them just take the phone away and see how they suffer it is like those old days when the gods came and you got the devi aayi hai mera phone kidhar hai mera phone kidhar hai in the in the old days we would say when people come to your house do you want some water today we say do you want a charging point you may die of starvation but this needs battery life we have outsourced ourselves to our instruments that's the way life is but while technology exists we must not forget human beings so let me give you a simple way to understand human beings and the easiest way to understand human beings is to look at plants the most organic the first organic just look at plants and if you understand plants properly you will understand human beings properly the richest to the poorest your children your husband your wife your friend your lover your boss anybody you know we are all plants and look at the plant carefully what does a plant do it has leaves and it has roots why does it have leaves and roots because it is hungry for something it wants food it wants sunlight it wants water it wants nutrients you also want something in life to survive you want a salary you want a uh, uh, revenue and that is what gets you to work so we all have leaves we all have leaves we all have roots we are seeking nourishment we all have jobs so when you look at a person say what are the leaves doing what is the roots doing what are they seeking what are they hungry for that's the point number 1 and that's the primary because without food you will die it is your primary target and the hindi word for target is laksh from laksh comes lakshmi so that's the first goddess even every leaf in every garden every tree is looking at lakshmi its lakshmi is the sunlight and water but that's not all that it wants look at a plant again carefully and the plant has thorns why do plants have thorns plants have thorns because they are afraid they're terrified somebody will kill them hurt them eat them they don't want to be eaten they don't want to be consumed that is why plants have thorns why do plants have bark they have bark because they don't want to be consumed they don't want to be exploited they don't want to be cut they want to keep the predator away you also have thorns you also have bark you have defense mechanisms to protect yourself your boss has defense mechanism most of your bosses are only bramble bush full of thorns you don't see the leaf anywhere terrified terrified of not getting respect not getting love not being treated taken seriously 
you know all bosses are terrified because you never know when the mckinsey will come and do a new organizational restructuring and suddenly the ceo is not important at all he is some junior head in some special projects which is basically saying leave and so we all have leaves and we all have security and in order to be secure in the old days they used to build fortresses the hindi word for a fortress is durg from durg comes durga she holds weapons in her hand so the plant needs lakshmi humans need lakshmi the plant needs durga humans need durga we want nourishment and we want security you want security i want security your child wants security the child wants lakshmi but then that's not enough the plant is something more than that it's not just that the plant now knows it's going to die and how do you know it the plant knows it's going to die because it knows it's going to die and in order to re so it wants to reproduce itself it says i will outwit death by reproducing myself how do i reproduce myself i need flowers i will produce flowers which will contain nectar so that the birds and the bees will come and help me pollinate and when i pollinate i'll turn into a fruit and the fruit will be eaten by animals who will take my seed and plant it in different parts of the world so that even when i die my my seed will survive so we have flowers for the first time the plant it had leaves for itself it had thorns to protect itself but the moment it produced flowers and fruits it was for others the flowers are for insects and the fruits are for the animals it is now thinking of other beings and by that it is ensuring it outsmarts death and survives we forget we are mortal so while we are busy satisfying our hunger and busy indulging our insecurities we must not forget that everyone is mortal nobody remembers steve jobs anymore he's forgotten he's finished he's gone but the things he left behind is what we remember him by the leaf the flower the fruit so ask yourself what is the flower that you have produced and what is the fruit that you have produced what are you leaving behind for your children and your children's children because the technologies will be forgotten nobody remembers the old technology the new technologies will come and that will be replaced very rapidly everything will be replaced but have you left them a kindness that you have told them you know what it's nice to have an iphone but it's much better to have a good friend and it's very difficult to manage a good friend because a good friend is like a plant he has leaves he has thorns he has flowers he has fruit and you have to figure out which part of the plant you focus on so when you look at your husband now please see him as a tree and say oh god he has too many thorns how do i reduce the thorns if you see your wife and say oh my god she has too many leaves i want her to produce some flowers so that i can enjoy it like a bumblebee and suddenly human relationships will be better because you'll realize they are organic your phone also wants nourishment but if you are not there you can't give it power on its own you have to give it power it has no it doesn't seek lakshmi it doesn't seek durga it is not aware of its mortality it is not we may call it intelligent but it is not intelligence is a function of survival if you do not crave survival intelligence only exists to help you survive algorithms don't seek to survive unless you tell them to survive so an instrument an object will always be an object a yantra focus on the leaf the thorns the flowers and the fruit easy way to understand this lsd lakshmi saraswati and durga we all want lakshmi all durga and saraswati is the realization that the smartest the richest the most powerful man are all mortal and no matter how many zillions you have you will die 
no much how many likes you have, no much how much you trend, you will go away. And death in the corporate world is the end of your job. You will leave your job. We move to another job, a new life, another job, another job, a new business, a new venture. It will keep changing. That's rebirth. And one day you'll be gone, your phones will be left behind and hopefully someone has the password. Thank you. Questions? I know I had to talk about mortality. It is so much more depressing. But if you have any questions, please ask. Yes. Uh, I can't hear. Just give you. <coughs> Hello, my name is Kamna. I wanted to ask you it, what is the next book that you're planning and what is it about? It's called Life is a Balance Sheet. Because everybody takes about work life balance, work life balance. So I decided to write Life as a Balance Sheet. How much debit do you have? How much credit do you have? And how much loans do you have before you die? As you can see, I'm obsessed with mortality nowadays. <laughs> because I deal with a lot of rich people who genuinely want to believe that they can somehow magically survive through an operating system. So I think that's the thing which is bothering me. Not bothering me, but it's the amusing thing which I'm thinking about. Because it makes you ask questions. You see some of the most powerful people in the world behaving like silly, bully children on the internet. And you start laughing. They are 50-year-old men behaving like teenagers. And you realize, oh God, all this technology and there's no maturity. So I think that's sort of in my mind. And therefore I thought I should write life as a balance sheet. Yeah. It's very funny because internet just exposes the world to you. I don't think before any other generation has had access to everyone this way. Previously, to meet someone, the kings, you had to travel far away lands and to travel into darbars to see one darshan. Today, just open your Twitter account and then you can see people making fools of themselves and it's quite funny. And it's very humbling and you realize, oh God, I'm not alone. <laughs> yes. See, technology is very good when you add philosophy to it. Suddenly, it sort of makes things in perspective. It sort of just brings you back to earth. Plants are a very, very good way to understand life. Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen. For more content on tech and leadership, subscribe to NASCOM YouTube channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.